360 exclusive inside the fighting in Ukraine from a perspective that's never been shown before. The view from inside a Ukrainian combat helicopter flying at treetop level and sometimes below the tree line under constant threat from ground fire and fighters above. Flying these choppers is one of the most dangerous jobs in this war. And with Russia beginning a new offensive, it could soon get even riskier. CNN Sam Kiley has the story. The target is Russian troops. A hard bank left and a dive. And flares to distract heat seeker missiles. A pair of Ukrainian helicopters on an assault against Russian forces close to Bakhmut. The Russian aircraft are waiting around the border, it's on the front line. We should be careful when we go. We should fly on very low altitude and very low speed to prevent, pre to prevent our recognition. Below trenches and East Ukrainian villages smashed by war. Back from this sortie, this forward base is secret as low profile as possible. The MI-8 helicopters are refueled and rearmed. They expect to fly at least three sorties a day. When you took off this morning, were you frightened? Why? Well, because the Russians want to kill you. So we don't have any other choice than to fight with Russians. If you're frightened, you should stay at home. That's not an option here. is about 30 years old. The threat against it is extreme, and as a result of that, we're having to fly quite literally below the height of trees, climbing and dipping with every piece of woodland that we pass. Built as transport aircraft, they're most vulnerable when they climb to shoot their rockets. Diving for cover to 20 feet above the ground is also perilous. A change in sound indicates a tree strike by the helicopter's blades. Back at base, the blades are swapped quickly. Ukraine doesn't have aircraft to spare. Nor pilots. Sir, he skippers the chopper that hit the trees. He tells me, in December, a very close friend of mine died. A lot of people I knew, friends, have already died, unfortunately. It's very painful, and I'm very upset, and I cannot move on. He went on, we need new attack helicopters, new jets. Unfortunately, our equipment is old, and its range is very small, and it's inaccurate. A year into fighting Russia's invasion, Ukraine is still asking for more advanced helicopters and jets. So far, the response from her allies has been, sorry, but no. And so they fight on here with what they've got. Sam Kylie joins us now from Eastern Ukraine. Sam, that, that's incredible. Um, what was it like in that helicopter? I mean, the idea that you're flying below the tree line, that, that the rotor of the helicopter actually hit a tree, I mean, it's extraordinary, the risk that these pilots are taking. It is extraordinary risk. It's a real Sir David and Goliath. Uh, if we, one needed one of those comparisons in Ukraine, that would be it. These are ancient helicopters, a sort of uh, Soviet equivalent of a Black Hawk, but a very old and ancient uh, Black Hawk transport helicopter fitted uh, with these uh, rocket pods and uh, sent into battle uh, fearful of uh, fighter jets, of surface-to-air missiles, of ground fire. I mean, they, uh, when we were on that aircraft, I could have almost leant out the window and touched the stubble of the trees uh, of, of the fields uh, passing below me. So it really is extremely high risk. They have taken pretty heavy casualties, particularly at the beginning of the war, before they could organise themselves. The other thing I think is important to note here by... Uh, Fluke, entirely by fluke, a lot of these veteran pilots have been flying 
uh, recently in the last 15, 20 years on uh, peacekeeping missions with the United Nations in Africa. So they've got a lot of hours. They've got a lot of hours in areas of conflict like the Democratic Republic of the Congo and uh, Sierra Leone, Liberia, Mozambique uh, and elsewhere. And as a consequence of that, uh, they're pretty... Uh, very, very highly skilled, and they're all paired with much younger pilots. But one mm. of the younger pilots I spoke to, who has been flying for just a few years, this year alone, Anderson, he counted to 100 combat sorties and then stopped bothering, Anderson. Wow. Incredible. Sam Kiley, thank you for that report. Really extraordinary. CNN military analyst and retired Army Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling joins us now. General Hurtling, I mean, are those helicopters even designed for, for that? They are, Anderson. Those are MI-17 helicopters, I think. I just picked it up on the film as, as Sam was doing his report. And what, he, what they're flying is what's called nap of the earth. All combat aircraft do that. They try and stay as low as possible to avoid any kind of radar signatures. And there is that up and down uh, nap of the earth under uh, undulating terrain. But they're firing rocket pods. And rocket pods are not precision weapons. They're somewhat the artillery of the air. So it's, it's difficult to really get a target strike with that unless you're literally pointing at the target. And you could see as the helicopter was flying over the, the train and as, as they just fired uh, their rockets, they're really aiming toward an area for an area fire versus a precise target. So what, what would more advanced aircraft, advanced helicopters or, you know, uh gunships or, or, or aircraft, what would that allow Ukrainian forces to do that they can't now? Well, it, in some cases, uh, certainly they, the advanced Western-style aircraft, Sam mentioned the Black Hawk. Uh, I, I kind of chafed a little bit when he said they're ancient, ancient because they are not ancient. They're, they're actually pretty new on, in the Army's inventory, but it would allow them more transport. It would give them guns on the side, the same kind of rocket pods. What I think the pilots are talking about are more the attack helicopters like Apaches or even Cobras. Uh, those are extremely expensive, uh, very technologically advanced, takes a whole lot of training and a whole lot of maintenance, but they fire precision weapons uh, from the aircraft and they can be tank killers from literally uh, almost up to 12 kilometers away. But the training on that, how long do, uh, does that take? It's immense. You know, there, there's been talk a lot about the F-16s. Uh, you would probably have to put as much time in uh, an Apache helicopter as you would for an F F-16. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, a lot of language saying we need to give them the F-16. Yuri Inat, who's the spokesman for the Ukrainian Air Force, just said last week that it would take Ukrainian pilots a couple of weeks to just learn how to fly the uh, fighter jets, but about six months to really master how to fight the aircraft. That's about the same for an Apache helicopter because they are so technologically advanced. They have heads up displays on their helmets themselves, takes two pilots, uh, and, and it would just really take a very long training time besides being extremely expensive. Yeah, General Hurtling, I appreciate it. Thank you.